Good day, all. I wrap Steen of Linden Associates with your financial market wrap-up, and this wrap-up is for Tuesday, and we're now at the 14th of September, 2021, just after 5.15 p.m. Central Time. By the way, if you're in Australia, I will be on tomorrow in uh, Sky Business News, 5.30 Chicago time. Take your clocks and adjust. It's like, what, 13-hour difference. So it's going to be a good time for you to be watching that, is my point. And uh, it, it'll be the market kickoff here, if you will, because at 5 o'clock we reopen. And I wanted to do a show after we reopened uh, the, the Chicago markets, and that's, that's the time that we'll be in. So I think it'll be interesting for our Aussie viewers. Today was an interesting day. Why was it interesting? Because it was the Fed Transition Day team that won the day. The market was looking for still a relatively hot CPI number. They got doused with water. They're only up three-tenths of a percent. The market was looking for up four-tenths. And you were even down in the core uh, CPI. That doesn't mean that they're not still good numbers and they're not running at 2%. I mean, three-tenths of a percent a month times 12 months, you can see where you get there. But... They're slipping backwards. Now, why did they slip and where did they slip is one of the questions. Used cars are falling rather hard. New cars are going up. Rent is going up. Airplane tickets went down. I'm giving you what's going on. But there is that transition. Services starting to creep higher as more and more services are paying more money to get people to work for them. Even today, I think it was Target moved to a $15 minimum wage level. So you're starting to get that working into the market. One month proves nothing. It just proves that the spike has run out. It does not mean that you're trending lower just yet. Put together a couple of months, yes. But what did it really do? It hurt and threw water on the camp that are saying, well, at the next Fed meeting, the Fed's got to do something. They'll, they'll be announcing the tapering. The Fed can do whatever it wants, but if it's going to be data-based, this is not the data they're going to base that tapering to, to start now on. That could come November, December, January, whenever. We have to see what the numbers look like. How did the stock market do? Well, the fact that tapering wasn't taking place, or likely not to immediately in front of us, it first kicked the market higher. Then the market looked at itself and said, uh-uh, and it started rolling down. The NASDAQ was the last part of the market that was up up until the end of the Apple debut of its new products, the online virtual that we were all watching. And after that ended, Apple just let go to the downside as well, and that carried the NASDAQ with it. So when I take a look at the S&P, it's just what I said yesterday. We're in a corrective mode. Okay, it's not huge, it's not deep, but I do think September's an ugly hard month to be bullish in the stock market. October gets more volatile, and I'm still gonna stand on what I said before. I think that the odds strongly favor you'll get a year-end rally to new highs. I'll stick with that until I have a reason not to. I'm, I look at the odds all the time. I look at years that have done this type of action, and there are, and the odds again. You rally into the end of the year, and I, I understand Amazon may not have the product, and you're going to say whatever for the holiday shopping. You'll buy gifts that you don't want for people. That's what it'll be. You're not going to buy, not buy. That's what I'm saying. And the store shelves won't be empty. They just won't have the best products. That, that much I do believe. In the S&P 500, you're in a corrective mode. You want to call it anything else, fine. I didn't expect the market to drop this much. I don't mind saying that to you. It's just the way that it is. But once it did it, I recognized it. And this all began, I think you understand, right here. This is where the market ended its bull run. You broke the pattern of higher lows, higher highs. You started down. And from there... What happened is the market, as you can see, has worked its way lower. Now, keep this in the back of your mind, this picture, because as we add the other parts to the chart, you see how it all fills in. When you got under that number right through here, two days later, you closed under the 18-day average. You changed the bias of the market to down. So now you had lower highs, lower lows, and you're under the 18-day average, and it's been showing up as a resistance point. 
in terms of the Bollinger Band, the market had peaked back here. It didn't peak with it right there. It peaked earlier than that. But on the bottom side, I think you're close enough where I'll stick my neck out. Nah, I think the lower Bollinger Band, just as it's done each time in the past, you don't have to exactly hit it. You're pretty darn close to it. You're in a support area. I don't care what the low is, you're in that support zone of the market and you're oversold just the way you had gotten yourself and you were pointing down back here. I can carry you to each one of these. Are we more oversold than we did back there? Absolutely. The world isn't perfect. We'll see what goes on. Is the trend up? No, the trend is down. And in these instances, you didn't have a downtrend. You had a higher high and then the lower low. You have the higher high and then the lower low, except that this is a different look to it and we haven't had that in a while. Got it? The next thing I look at is the NASDAQ that is caught in no man's land. It lost its bullish embedded reading. And when you do so, you normally head back to the 18-day average. I thought it would do better than this, to be honest. I thought the market with Apple today would give it one last punch as this is going off the board. In fact, all the uh, September futures contracts go off the board. I think it's this Friday, triple witching day, along with the option. So it's going to be a little crazy come Friday. That's very typical. But the trend is down. The bias is down. If it wants to punch on the downside, could get to 15,148. Right now on the chart action, nothing is bullish on it. In the Dow, you hit your first downside target, you bounced. The next series of targets for support too, are 34,431 and 34,428 and you're oversold. I'll hang my hat on that. That is not a sign when I say it's support that I'm saying, oh, go out and buy the market, it's going higher. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying those that have been fortunate enough to catch this will take a lot of funds off their shorts right through there. Why not? Each time you hit the Bollinger Band, you've gotten a bounce from it. Understand what they're doing. In the Russell, game over. It had its day in the sun, and now it's got trouble. And the trouble is pretty formidable. Look where that 18 and the 100-day uh, average are. They're fighting each other there. Should the market let go any further? And it doesn't have to. It's already oversold. But should it? Then the supports the 200-day and the lower Bollinger Band. On the way up, you got a lot of resistance on the chart right now. In the VIX cash. So the VIX is fighting again at the one, I'm sorry, 200-day moving average. I wanted it to get up to the upper Bollinger Band because in my morning subscriber video, I told my traders, this is where if you're going to take a shot, you can either write calls or people are going to buy puts up there looking for the market to get back to the 18-day average. Didn't quite give it. What would you do if you didn't know me and the market's making a move and it goes up towards the upper Bollinger Band? You'd probably get all excited and bullish as the market goes there. This thing's on its way. It's finally got a base. I'm telling you the opposite. I think the market is now in an area where it's uh, gotten up, could capture these late coming bulls, and they could get pushed down. I think the pros got out of long positions today there. They didn't get up to the 10-year note number, so I don't think they've done anything. The trend is up. The bias is up. Until it's not up, it's up. And in the dollar index, again, you're not going anywhere. You're just back and forth fighting in here. Let's take a look at the euro currency. Remember when the euro got all the way up here and we were talking about this and I said, I know it's euphoric. I know the people are bullish. Folks, when you hit the upper Bollinger Band and you're not embedded, that's where the pros come out. The market then tries to embed. Let's see if it did. Both numbers were over 80. Day before, they're over 80. The day before, come on, let me go. There they are. They're over 80. Three days in a row. What happens if you lose the embedded reading? It means the price is typically going to make a run back to the 18-day average unless the day afterwards it re-embeds again. It could only get one shot at re-embedding. So I'm looking for it down. I think the pros are going short with both hands on this. Their stop will be up there, and this is what they're looking for, and right through there. I teach this in the Enhanced Bollinger Band course. Go to our website, www 
irapstein.com under education. Take a look at it there. By the way, I believe this works just the same way in stocks, ETFs, spiders. If it's a chart, it's a chart. If you can embed it and do this, I don't care the name of it. It would be a sore cover. Lower highs, lower lows, market back into neutral territory right now. British pounds, what do you do the first time you get up to an upper Bollinger Band and the 100-day average? Come on, get on the team. That's where the pros are coming out, and that's where the suckers are buying. Boom, right back down. Now, when I say sucker, I don't want to be insulting to anybody. It's the people that are new at it. The pros that have been around it. I don't know pros that buy Bollinger Bands. You may know them. Write me about it. I don't. I know pros that will, uh, when you lock in on them, they'll buy the pullbacks, but they're not buying over this number. They understand the percentages. 95% of the time, you're going to stay under it. 95% of the time, if you get under it, you're going to go back over it. I want to be the house. I don't want to be the guy sitting at the table. We know he's going to churn himself out. For the one guy that wins at the table, the other eight, I'm getting paid on. Now we take a look at the Brent. Lower and low, higher high, fully embedded. This rules the day. Give a good break in the market until that red line closes under 80. I think this market's still being a, a buy. Brent's a little different here, and I want you to use a little caution in WTI. Why? We're going to find out in the morning just how bad Tropical Storm Nicholas was, how much damage it did to the oil platforms, if any, the refineries, if any, the flooding we know is going on, how much damage there in other areas. If it's not as bad as the market was looking for, you get a correction. Up in front of it, You'd expect that because the worst is here. Same thing, you got to watch heating oil. And I like heating oil. I, I like natural gas. I've told you that for a while. And I like heating oil, but I like it on pullbacks in the market. This market's not giving you that opportunity. The world is short of natural gas. And people are buying it and they're sending it abroad in, with both hands. And the time frame we should have been really putting it away right now, we're consuming it. So that's a, a bit of a problem uh, for the market. You can see how the run. Uh, today it was up another three cents. Day before it was up 30 cents. I mean, this has just been one of these runs that's unbelievable. Hard to catch because it's not an inexpensive commodity. You almost got to trade the mini contracts and the volatility. Rather, the volume there isn't what I'd want to see. But you look at it all, you have fun with it, and that's the name of the game. And for me, the name of the game starts every morning when I get up and I start reading and then start putting together for my subscribers my morning subscriber video. This is so different than that morning flash video. This is where I'm giving you the trade ideas to set yourself off. Now, if you're a full subscriber to my research, this is just the morning video. Very inexpensive, $7.95 to give it a try. My full research, if I see things during the day, I write two reports a day. Then I'll put out special updates to this. But this sets the pattern for what I'm seeing the day to go with. And it gives you a pretty good idea as to what I'm seeing. And on the weekends, I'm using weekly charts and giving you the week's pattern that I'm looking. And from Friday to Friday, I stand with it. Does that mean I don't cover the weekly charts every now and then? No, I'll bring them in if I think there's something important because I'm looking at them. You know, I got a bunch of computer screens. I can see what I want. Give it a try. What do you have to lose? You're in the trading season. You're not committing to anything but $7.95 if you haven't given it a try. Do it. If you're watching this video and you're a regular, aren't you being penny wise, dollar foolish? Go to our website, go under the word education and decide for yourself. I'm Ira Epstein. Have a great day.